A pre-cracked rubber plate under tension has the following dimension. The plate is 1.2 mm thick. The initial crack is 5 mm and has a crack opening of 0.25 mm. This means these two crack edges are 0.25 mm away. We want to model the crack growth using cohesive zone model such that this initial crack grows and eventually fails. We will start with drawing the part. We will crop this line and draw another line here. And the part drawing is complete. To separate this fracture zone, we have to partition this and this part out. Note that we will make the partitions in part module. face and drawing to line from here to here and uh, from here to here we will complete the partition this is the final result after the partition now we will assign a rubber section with rubber material to the top and the bottom portion and a cohesive section with cohesive material in the cohesive zone the fracture energy in mode 1 for rubber is 0.005 unit to get this fracture energy experimentally let's say if we pull this specimen and we have this particular force displacement curve we can integrate this curve to get the uh, area under this curve which is the unit of energy if we further divide this energy with the cracked area we will get the fracture energy now we will use this uh, energy value to construct a bilinear cohesive law. To know more about how a cohesive law is, uh, can be designed, there is a video link in the description that will be in uh, more detail discuss about this bilinear cohesive law. There are three parameters required to define such a cohesive law. The slope, the maximum stress and the fracture energy. But in this case, we only have the fracture energy at our disposal. So we have to make some educated guess on the slope and the maximum stress. One way to defining the slope is to find the material Young's modulus that is close to the cohesive zone, so which is rubber. So we will define about a thousand times of the value that we have for this material as the slope or stiffness to the cohesive uh, law. So in this case, the slope becomes 10,000. Next, the maximum stress. To get an assumption on that, we will have a stress that is close to the linear elastic part of the rubber material response, which is close to 0 0.1. So it, you can note that uh, these two values, as we have guessed, can vary but still we will have a valid cohesive law but the fracture energy remains constant if we vary this uh, uh, these two parameters uh, too much uh, into the unfavorable region then it will cost us the simulation time for example as we have right cases here we can run this simulation probably in a minute or two but uh, if these values are uh, into the extreme then uh, it may require a couple of hours to complete this simulation and uh, it may also fall into convergence issue now as we have uh, defined 
the cohesive law for mode one fracture uh, the video in the description also says that we have to define it for all three mode of fracture mode one mode two and mode three but in this case we will assume that the, all the parameters in every mode is same so we will define three slope values for mode one mode two and mode three in abacus we will define the maximum stress also for three modes but in fracture energy we have defined uncoupled uh, uh, criteria so that means only one value of fracture energy is enough for this definition now let's define this material in abacus now we will define the cohesive zone material First, the elastic response or the slope, go to elasticity, elastic. And then in isotropic option, you can go to traction. And then here is the value of three slopes. And as you said, we said that it would be 10,000 for each direction. So we put 10,000 in all three mode of fracture. Next thing we have to define the damage for traction separation law there are a menu to choose from but uh, in our case we will ch choose quad s damage that means uh, we will have a couple damage and our damage criteria would be stress that is defined by the last letter here s and here we can give this maximum stress for each mode And finally, to define the fracture energy, we will go to subroutine and say damage evolution. And we will have this pop-up that says displacement at failure. We can change that option from displacement to energy here. And then we can enter the, displace, the fracture energy value here. And uh, note that I have defined mode independent. That's why I am defining only one value. If it is instead of anything else, we have to define multiple input parameters. So this material has been defined. I have already defined the material, rubber material, which has this Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio according to the description. We, next, we will create two sections. Our first section is solid homogeneous and the material that we are going to use is uh, rubber and the plane stress thickness is 1.2 according to the geometry and our first section is created named section one so we will go ahead now assign this uh, section to the part so go to section assignment and select this part shift this part and say that section one would be assigned into these two portions. Next, we will create the section for this cohesive zone. And uh, now something to notice is this section, cohesive zone section can be defined in others cohesive. We just give the default name section two. So the section is created. And uh, we have to define a few more things the material is coh that one we define with the cohesive law and in response we will uh, keep traction separation and then uh, the initial thickness so it's um, advised that we keep it to one and the out of plane thickness is 1.2 so this thickness is actually the dimension here. So of course this is 0 0.25 millimeter, but numerically you can define any thickness. It's a standard that uh, some, uh, we, we put one as the numerical thickness. Uh, it makes lots of our other calculations much easier. Now this section will be assigned to the cohesive zone. We'll select section two, cohesive. 
and done then i have created a step created a reference point given a constraint and pull this uh, end up in a separate video you can see that how uh, a reference point is constrained here to make a force displacement curve but uh, this for this part of this description is not important to model a cohesive zone we have also given the boundary condition that this is fixed and another boundary condition says that th this end will be pulled up but all these steps are standard for any other model either it is involving a cohesive zone or not next it is critically important to be very careful while defining the mesh in the cohesive zone so it can be done as follows when you go to mesh you go to mesh control select this region in the middle and uh, make sure that uh, you use quad mesh and the technique is sweep and the next thing is you will check this redefine sweep path and uh, notice that this arrow sign is along the uh, direction of your application of load that means um, and the deformation you are expecting for this cohesive zone to, to upwards or downwards so the arrow is um, either to the up or to the down that doesn't matter much but it has to be in this line but if this arrow was along this line you could have uh, select new and selected this edge such that this arrow appears here you also have to make sure that the number of elements along this is only one so you are allowed only one layer of elements along this cohesive zone when you are satisfied with that the next important things is to select appropriate element type again select this part and then make sure that cohesive element is selected probably by default plane stress or plane strain element would be selected so you have to select cohesive element if you want element deletion that's something optional you have to also tick this yes uh, box i have defined plane stress element to these two portion additionally and then i will make the mesh mesh numbers are visible i have made now those invisible this is how it looks after meshing and notice i have only one element layer through the uh, cohesive zone and the sweep direction was along this line it doesn't matter top or bottom so we have done everything different for this layer compared to the other two portion of this part we have defined cohesive element and a cohesive law material we have defined a cohesive section now we will run the simulation and share the results with you this is how it will look after the simulation so look how the crack is propagating optionally you can get rid of this mesh line through this operation and you can visualize the crack propagation